The project manager says someone came into this garage and stole more than $5,000 worth of this tile. And Tennessee is at risk for losing millions of dollars in state funding. Some of the drugs were found in an iced tea can like this one found inside a hidden compartment. Once Franklin was left unattended, he escaped through this hole in the fencing and then went on straight through the woods. He just stepped over to tell me as much as he could. He says that from what he knows, this whole thing, quote, this whole thing started on the highway with a shooting incident there. Scary moments for the attorneys at this Cleveland law firm. Bullet holes damaging their front windows. They're now having to be taped over. Cleveland police are now investigating shots fired into these windows. While Rick Smith has been publicly silent since the December 22nd rape and assault, we're now learning that he has been making changes at Udawa High School. Cindy, Greg, does this situation feel familiar to you? Right now, I'm driving around downtown Chattanooga trying to look for a parking spot. Good morning, Latrice. I've been out here since about 4 a.m. and I can tell you that this is starting to look like there's some progress being made. The truck has now been turned upright. The contents are being pushed off to the side of the road now by a bulldozer. Agent Gibbons says it's like an underground market and here's how it works. The person doing the stealing is not usually the same person doing the shooting. People will steal guns and sell them to criminals or criminals will pay someone else to legally buy a gun for them. A volunteer artist is working on this Memorial Day to complete the painting honoring Chattanooga's Fallen Five. Carson Holmquist, Randall Smith, Tommy Sullivan, Skip Wells, and David Wyatt. Those are the five things you need to remember about that day. And their five faces will forever be remembered in Chattanooga. But just as this mural is to honor the lives lost, it's also for the families they left behind. Uh, you know, the whole reason I started this was for, for Carson Holmquist's son, Wyatt. Uh, I'd seen a picture of him holding up that sign that said, you know, we've waited 244 days for this. Local artist Kevin Bate says this picture is a big reason he took on the project. It shows Sergeant Carson Holmquist's wife and young son Wyatt welcoming him home after his last deployment. Just that, that one sign just destroyed me. It was so sad for me. I've got a, a son about Wyatt Holmquist's age. Bate hopes the widows, parents, and children of the Fallen Five know there's always a place for them in Chattanooga, and their family's sacrifice will always be remembered. I wanted to make sure that if there was something here to remind you know, everybody, but you know, especially you know, Wyatt Holmquist, anytime he came through here so he could remember his dad, see him as a larger-than-life figure, because I think he is. On this first Memorial Day without them, Bate asked for a flag to fly while he finishes the painting. I kind of threw a request out on Facebook to see if anybody had like a big flag that I could hang on the scaffolding. What was brought to the mural site was more than he could have ever imagined. A flag that has waved overseas and at home. A flag that had flown over Iraq and at the Capitol. And on this Memorial Day, it's flying over our fallen five. These are men have put on their uniform and you know, they were working for us. I think that every bit of honor is due to them. With one portrait still left to be finished, Bates says the Fallen Five mural will be completed by July 16th, one year after the shootings. In Chattanooga, Kelly McCarthy, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. A Ringgold family mourned the loss of their Marine in 2007, thinking he never had the chance to have his own family. But a recent phone call changed everything, and it certainly makes Veterans Day extra special this year. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Kelly McCarthy talked with the family to find out how that phone call changed their lives forever in an interview you'll see only on 3. Lance Corporal William Chambers was proud to be a Marine. When 9-11 happened, that's when Will started getting military-minded, and that's pretty much, that was his focus. The 20-year-old who was stationed in Iraq died in 2007, serving the country he loved. His mother, Kathy Mabe, was left to mourn his death and hopes for his future. Chambers never had the chance to have a family of his own. It's after a lot of the grieving and the pain had passed, you know, it would have been awesome to have a piece of him back.
wish that came true earlier this year. Eight years after her son's death, <laughs> Maeve got an unexpected call from his high school girlfriend. You know, and then when we got the proof of the DNA test, I was, I was shaking and crying. I was so happy. DNA results showed that Will Chambers left behind a son. News that was shared with nine-year-old Blake a day before Channel 3 was invited to tell his story. He is so much like Will, it's just unreal. Two people so similar, yet total strangers. Chambers never knew he had a son. He died when Blake was just two years old. Now the Mabe family hopes to make up for lost time. Oh <laughs> This family came to life yesterday, you know, because so much pieces of us died when Will did, and Blake brought it back to life. New life that has created tough conversations for Blake as he learns who his father was and about the sacrifice he made for his country. Honestly, every time I come to this grave, I lay down on the ground and hug it, and I see a picture of him, I go up to it and hug it. Kathy Mabe says she sees her son every day in the face of a grandson. She now plans on spending the rest of her life getting to know. No matter what you have or who's there, you're always incomplete when you lose a child, especially if they don't have children. And, you know, he's, Blake's perfect. He's what we need. I'll share more heartwarming details about what Blake and his new family have in store for the future and how he's learning all he can about his father and his father's sacrifice for his country. That's coming up at 6 o'clock. In the studio, Kelly McCarthy, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Cindy, Chief Fletcher tells us his officers were at the right place at the right time, and you'll see their brave rescue from one of the officer's body cameras. It shows them rushing inside the apartment, risking their own lives to save others. These were officers who were actually looking for a bad guy, and they were trying to serve a warrant. And while that was happening, they realized that there was a fire and somebody was in danger. Officers Aaron Williams, Matthew Robertson, and Daniel Russell were at Ridgeway apartment Sunday night when Janice Beasley returned home to her apartment and saw it filled with smoke. I didn't even smell it. I nothing. I just heard the smoke detector going off and I keyed in and that's when the smoke hit me and I came back out with my kids. I didn't even make it in there. She called for the officers and they rushed inside. I'm going to do a quick peek. This is body cam video from one of the officers. Inside, they found Beasley's father, who was unresponsive on the couch. You good? Yeah. Breathe, man. Your apartment's on fire, boss. We didn't know how long you'd been in there and how much he inhaled. It was scary. Beasley didn't think anyone was home and even told the officers her apartment was empty. But two of them went inside anyway. The fire started from food left cooking on the stove. He remembered that he left the steak on the stove and he fell asleep. And after that, I don't know. Beasley is still in shock after her father's rescue. She had no idea how the officers got there so quickly until we told her they were serving a search warrant a few doors down. And that's what I did. And I'm like, did they get a call? Because there was no one outside but me and my two kids. What she does know is Officer Williams, Officer Robertson, and Officer Russell helped save her father's life. Yeah, I thank them so much for that. I do. That was a hero last night. The two officers who entered the apartment were treated for smoke inhalation and are now taking a few days off before returning back to work. Beasley's father was taken to the hospital last night for treatment, and he's expected to make a full recovery.